Let us now hear from the PAASE president, who will give us a backgrounder on the structure, goals, and expected output of this two-day event. Ladies and gentlemen, please extend a warm welcome to Dr. Joel Quelio. Thank you all, thank you. Uh, Dean Perry, I'll thank you for your welcome remarks. Uh, Secretary Perniam, Secretary De La Pena, uh, Secretary Ramon Lopez, I believe he's not here yet. Uh, distinguished uh, awardees, uh, distinguished guests, uh, my fellow uh, PAASI members and everyone, thank you and welcome to this uh, meeting of the Philippine American Academy of Science and Engineering. I'm really, really honored and privileged to be here. I just would like to give a quick recognition to uh, Dr. Giselle Concepcion, who is uh, the chair of our local organizing committee. Thank you so much, Giselle. This is such a production, thank you. And of course, to all of the grad students uh, helping you. Anyway, and you said Gev. <laughs> I'm here actually to uh, provide a context for this meeting that we are having today as well as tomorrow. And I thought that I'd just give a uh, quick uh, background or presentation uh, just to give the main idea uh, for the context of our volunteerism. Okay, so I'd like to begin by asking this question. What is science to Filipinos? So there was a time, a long time ago, when science to Filipinos meant uh, knowledge assimilation and preservation. But of course, uh, the Philippines uh, has graduated from that. And uh, today, science really is discovery as well as knowledge creation through research and development. And thanks to DOST, uh, which is providing uh, significant support, enormous support in terms of developing research and development in the country. And of course, uh, the Philippines now as well is in a transition to go into the next phase of science, which really is uh, science as value creation, which is innovation. All right, and science as value creation serves as the, the springboard, if you will, the foundation for science being a national business. And when we mean, uh, what we mean by business is both um, public business and private business, and both are for the public good and also science as a social contract. This is an agreement between the government and the citizens of the country, between the governed as well as the government. And that is because uh, the government is spending in science and technology, and it's a de deliberate business investment for the country. Um, therefore, science is a business for the people, and as such, there must be a return on investments. And in general, the return on investments is in the form of economic growth and national competitiveness. So these are the various stages by which every emerging country on Earth is uh, going through uh, in order to develop. Uh, it starts with agriculture and mining, and then after that, there is manufacturing, and that is the initiation of the takeoff of the economic development of such a country. But then there is manufacturing and research and development, and that is the drive to innovation, and ultimately that results in high-tech innovation or knowledge-based value creation. The last two phases uh, comprise what we refer to as the science and technology innovation ecosystem, and that is what PAASE, together with the other stakeholders, the government agencies, the private uh, uh, sectors are working together in order to develop the Philippines science and technology innovation ecosystem. Now, uh, this is uh, what the science and technology innovation ecosystem could look like in a few years. So thanks to the Department of Trade and Industry, the Board of Investments, who are basically uh, looking at uh, the globe right now and scouring for uh, the sectors of industry where it would make most sense for the Philippines to focus on and to channel its resources so that uh, it could develop as components of its innovation ecosystem. Examples of clusters include the automotive clusters, electronics and electrical, aerospace parts, chemical, shipbuilding, food processing and biotechnology and biomedical. And the way to uh, go about this, of course, is not just the government working on it in terms of manufacturing and R&D, but it is a three-way cooperation. So this is a government, industry, university partnerships, together, of course, with uh, global partners. 
So the government, the companies, the R&D working together as one, and that is how sustained value creation or innovation is generated. And of course, uh, there are specific government uh, departments or agencies uh, that have the mandate for taking care of specific um, functions uh, to carry this out, so, such as the Department of Trade and Industry, the Board of Investments, uh, Department of Science and Technology, Commission on Higher Education, and so on and so forth. So uh, to give you an exaggerated picture of what might be happening yesterday, uh, so uh, there's global manufacturing that's already occurring in the Philippines on one corner, in one corner. There's some small medium enterprises in the sector of science and technology that, that are also cropping up in another corner. Then it's still another corner, there's the science and technology entrepreneurs. And then you've got your universities with their research and development centers in still another corner. And of course, there's the government that's trying to oversee and also uh, supervise what's going on. But here's a strategic design model for an innovation ecosystem. This is how it should look like, and this is how it should be uh, harmonized. So you've got your global manufacturing and R&D, which brings in global resources, global capital to the Philippines, and you connect to that science and technology entrepreneurs, you connect to that the small medium enterprises, and you connect to that the universities and the research and development centers. So this is how the, um, um, this is how the synergistic cooperation uh, that results in value creation and innovation uh, is best produced. And of course, there's the government that's overseeing and administering uh, and serving as the arbiter for uh, this uh, intrinsic cooperation. So this is the context of what we mean by Paase volunteerism for Philippine science, engineering, and technology. And that is with a view to uh, building and establishing a thriving and prosperous science and technology innovation ecosystem in the Philippines with these stakeholders cooperating, closely working together. And this will all result in excellent return on investments for the Philippines. And those would include foreign direct investments, revenue and other taxes, science and technology jobs, so that a lot of the Filipino graduates in science and technology no longer will have to be compelled to go abroad so that they could be gainfully employed. Um, other jobs, there's a multiplier effects going on here. IP sharing of global companies, sharing with uh, Filipino uh, stakeholders, local SMEs being connected to the supply chain, high-tech expertise buildup, R&D critical mass buildup, and of course, industry multiplier effects. So this requires a deepened cooperation among the various government uh, departments and agencies within the country. Uh, research universities, including, of course, the uh, National Science Complex here at uh, UP, and also various institutions. Now, to the credit of the leaders of the uh, various departments here in the Philippines, they just signed a memorandum of understanding beginning of this month uh, for creating Philippine innovation and an entrepreneurship roadmap with the aim of developing the country's innovation and entrepreneurial ecosystem by enhancing the linkages between academe, research, community, industry, and government. And those are the seven departments and agencies that signed the MOU. And of course, PASE is uh, strongly supportive of this MOU, and we are uh, enthusiastic and also uh, very proactive in terms of helping them in any way that we can uh, to advance this. And so the overview of our meeting for over the two days, uh, we're gonna have panels uh, talking about the frontier innovation strategies and R&D applications as showcase for success. So uh, please uh, stay as long as you can uh, because uh, my colleagues from my famous, my illustrious colleagues uh, from various universities will be presenting their success stories. Um, we will have discussion groups and we also would like uh, and encourage every one of you to stay and participate in those discussion groups, which would result in resolution and position papers uh, that will be presented tomorrow to our um, department leaders. 
And of course, there will be posters, commercial and industry exhibits, university licensed technologies on exhibit uh, over the two days as well. I'd like to end by uh, reworking a famous uh, Chinese proverb. You know, it says, um, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, and the second best time is now. So I'm reworking that to the best time to plant the Philippine innovation ecosystem tree was 20 years ago. But the second best time is right now. <laughs> and Secretary Pernyak can attest to this, that the Philippines, especially right now, has really sound economic fundamentals. And I think that we should take advantage of this. This is the best time. <laughs> According to this, the second best time. But this is really high time, a wonderful time uh, for all of us to work together, take advantage of this great opportunity where the Philippines really is in the upswing economically uh, to establish the science and technology innovation ecosystems in the country. And again, welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Joel Coelho, for putting this two-day event into perspective.